Firstly, allow me to briefly explain the rules of this class trial. The results of the class trial will be decided solely by your votes. If you manage to correctly identify the blackened, only they will receive punishment. But should you vote incorrectly, everyone except for the blackened will be punished, and they will be able to escape this field trip of mutual killing. Well, first and foremost... Wait a minute, Monocrow. There's something I'd like to ask first. Oh, and what might that be? Accomplices. Can there be accomplices in a case? Good question. Whether or not there are accomplices will be a huge factor in deciding the culprit. A good question indeed. I guess it wasn't specified in the rules. To be blunt, there can be accomplices. What? So it's possible? But in theory. Only one person gets to actually leave the island anyway. Of course. The rules even say that only the first murder counts if more should occur. In other words, without any reward, an accomplice is no more than another tool for the culprit. They'd gain nothing from assisting the culprit after all. Even if they succeeded, They'd be unable to escape the island alongside the Blackened. More importantly, they'd still face the same execution as the rest of us. He's got that right. Wait, what's that? Oh, that. You don't need to concern yourself with it. It would have been Yuri Kagorin's seat, but it's rather sad to just leave a blank space there. That's an awful sense of humor you've got there. Wait, something's off about this. What's that empty seat over there? Whose is it? It's exactly what it looks like, an empty seat. There's no need to concern yourself with that either. You're very interested in the petty details, aren't you? Questions are fine, but shouldn't you be discussing the murder first? Right, this place is extremely unpleasant. I'd like to leave as soon as possible. It might be the last place you ever see if we don't figure out who the culprit is. Don't say such terrible things! Wait, all of you. Do you mind if I say something before we begin? Huh? What is the Kokoro? I know who the culprit is. What? Are you serious? Who is it? Who's the culprit? I know who the culprit is, and I know exactly how they did it. So I'll give them the chance to speak. Give yourself up now. Perhaps then I may understand that you regret your actions. You'll be found out anyway. And it's better to confess rather than have it dragged out of you. Nobody's confessing. Obviously. What kind of idiot would tell the truth? They'd be sentencing themselves to death. Alright. We'll do this the hard way. So who's the culprit, Coco? I can't tell you that right now. What? Why are you screwing around? Just tell us! We don't know who it is, so just tell us so we can get this over with! Like Sosie said, I don't want to be here any longer than I have to be. Would you be able to comprehend it? Even if I did tell you, I would be lucky to be believed. I sense that a few of you are suspecting me already. Ha. Uh -huh. Your powers of observation are truly outstanding. This is a class trial. All of our lives are on the line here. We need to find a conclusion that everyone finds acceptable, so that there is no doubt who the culprit is when we all cast our votes. Figure it out for yourselves as much as you can. I'll help you if you get stuck. This is totally suspicious. Ibiki, don't dismiss her when we haven't even started yet. What? What's with that condescending attitude, huh? Do you think I'm an idiot? Oh, sis, your mood's back up again. Yeah, of course. I don't want to sit around moping forever. I'm really scared, but I'll do whatever it takes to stay alive. I see. That's good, sis. Let's get started, then. Wait a moment. May I say something as well? What is it now? 
I imagine that some of you may suspect me simply because I'm the mastermind. Your opinions on me as a person are inconsequential. But please, for all of our sakes, treat me as just another student during the class trial. We would all die if we reached the wrong conclusion, after all. I don't want to die either, you know? That's exactly what the real culprit would say! Oh, come now. This is a prime example of what you should not do. Shinji, I'm sorry, but he's right. If Mikado wanted to act as the mastermind, he had plenty of opportunities to do so before. Everyone here is a suspect, including Mikado and I. The purpose of this discussion is to narrow down that list. I... I, I see. I understand. Oh, I'll, I'll try my best! So, can we start now? Where should we begin? If you're confused, try starting with what we know happened in this case. Do your best. My life's on the line, too. Begin. Riri died at 7.30 in the morning. 30 minutes after the morning announcements. Is it true that Sora and Yuki were together at the scene of the crime? Yes, Yuri contacted me. After I woke up this morning, when I saw the message asking for help, I immediately ran to the bell tower. I saw Yuri hanging from a rope, badly injured. And before I could do anything, he was dragged up. His corpse fell to the ground moments later. There were so many cuts on Yuri's body. Could the murder weapon be a sharp object? No, that's wrong! Yuri couldn't have been killed by a sharp object. If you check the monochrome file, it says that the cause of death was blunt force trauma. In other words, Yuri's death was likely caused by his fall. Oh, I see. There were so many cuts on his body that I overlooked that. Then what are those cuts from? Got it. His injuries were caused by the sharp wires. Wires? Did you see all the wires strung in between the empty space in the middle of the spiral staircase? Yuri was dragged up by a rope and was cut by the wires as he fell to the ground. He fell very quickly, which is why the wounds are so thin and yet so numerous. Oh, so that's why the cuts were there. You never even checked the monochro file? I can't believe you call that an investigation. I'm sorry! Hey, it was an honest mistake. Don't pick on her. An honest mistake? It's rich of you to say that when we could all die from it. I can't leave my life up to you all if you keep acting like idiots. Leave your life up to us. Everyone's lives depend on the outcome of this trial, not just mine, yeah? If the rest of you work hard to find out the culprit, I don't have to waste my own energy. What? You're basically saying that you're going to leech off of us? I will intervene if I have to, but I'm not a fan of inefficiency. You're working to save your own hides, so isn't this a favorable outcome for us all? You degenerate ruffian! Have you never even heard of the concept of cooperation with someone? Now, now, everyone. We won't accomplish anything if we let ourselves be distracted by people such as Mr. Hashimoto. Let's carry on with deliberations, shall we? But if the culprit wanted to kill Yuri by dropping him... Why did they go through the trouble of installing all of those wires? I'm not sure. I think we'll have to talk about it a little more. Alright, so could everyone tell me what they were doing at the time of Riri's death? Like I said, Sora and I saw Yuri's death with our own eyes. We were together, so does that count as our alibi? I... was alone in my room. Do I have to tell you? I was just wandering around the place. Mr. Kagarin died around 7.30 a.m., so everyone besides Mr. Maeda, Miss Sora, 
Miss Mitsume. And Mr. Hashimoto must have been in the dining hall. No, Yoriko wasn't there. Yuko, where were you and what were you doing at the time? I... that's... I was also at the bell tower. I met Yuki and Sora there. The bell tower? But that's the scene of the crime, isn't it? If Sora and Yuki were there because of the message... Yoriko, what were you doing there? What was I doing? Kanade, just in case it comes up later, Yoriko technically witnessed Yuri's death with us. You heard the body discovery announcement, right? It's only announced when three or more people find the body. Sora and I saw it first, and Yoriko a little while after. Hold on, Mr. Maeda. You claim that Mr. Kagarin was hoisted by a rope? What? Uh, yeah? Then it stands to reason that the two of you witnessed the culprit, no? What? Really? If the Black and dragged Mr. Kagarin with a rope up to the top of the bell tower, our two witnesses would have immediately followed afterwards in pursuit. I see. Because the only way down from the top of the tower is down the spiral staircase. Whether the culprit went down or Sora and Yuki went up, they would definitely bump into each other at some point somehow. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. We did get to the top of the bell tower, but Yoriko was the only one up there. That means Yoriko's the culprit. What? Isn't it obvious? Like Emma said, the only way to climb up the tower is by using the stairs. And if you were there, you don't have a good excuse like Yuki and Sora. And you've been looking worried from the start. It's clear to everyone that Yoriko's the culprit. Don't you think so, sister? Huh? But, Kanade, we just said that Ruko's a witness. Sis, please just think for a moment. Yoriko doesn't have an alibi. And she has no reason to be in the bell tower if she's not related to the case. I... I guess. When you put it that way, Ruko does sound pretty suspicious. Hey now! Who are you calling suspicious? Okay then, Yuko. Can you tell us why you were at the bell tower? You and Rara just told us that they were there because they got a message from Riri. Tell us why you were there, then we won't have a reason to doubt you. That's... I don't know. I don't know why I was there. What? Are you kidding me right now? Y Yoriko's situation sounds kind of complicated. I thought she was the culprit at first too, but... After I heard her testimony, I'm not so sure that's right. Yoriko, calm down and tell us your side of the story. I went outside as soon as the Monocruz's door opened. So I could start my morning investigation before breakfast began. Then someone attacked me from behind and I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I was at the top of the bell tower next to Sora and Yuki. Do you have any proof? For example, someone who saw you leave early. What? No, nobody saw me. No, that's wrong! Actually, there was someone who saw Yuriko leave early this morning. Shinji, you said you saw her, right? Oh, uh... Me? Well, yeah, I, I definitely saw y y Yuriko leaving early this morning. You guys sure do get up early, don't you? What were you guys doing? Hajime and I go jogging every morning, you know? I woke up early, so I was waiting for him in the hallway. Hajime was late because he had to use the bathroom. And I saw Yuroku leaving as soon as the monocruise door opened up. It's like I said, I'm not lying. However, while we've proven that you left the ship early, can we really be certain that it was for the sake of investigation? What? Doesn't that just make you even more suspicious? The murder did happen this morning, after all. And the culprit who killed Mr. Kagarin definitely wasn't in the monocruise this morning. That's true, but... So, does that mean Yoruko really is the culprit? Wait a minute! 
Why is everyone accusing me when I haven't done anything? I told you, I don't know how or why I was there. I lost consciousness right after I left. Assuming what Yuriko says is the truth, the culprit attacked her and moved her to the bell tower to pin the blame on her? But then there's no explanation for how Yuri was pulled to the top. Maybe the culprit was hiding somewhere at the top of the tower? No, we looked around for a bit, but it's an exposed area with almost no furniture around. It would be very difficult for someone to hide themselves up there. If Yoriko can't explain herself, we have no choice but to assume she's the culprit. Yeah. Wait, that's not true. I'm not. When it came to conclusions, Yoriko isn't lying. Coco. Listen to her voice. She's telling the truth. I know you're a psychologist, Koro, but how can you be so sure? The method you're using to deduce Yoriko's alleged culpability is far too short-sighted. We'll look at the bigger picture instead of focusing solely on her. Such as... Why Yuri was killed, perhaps. Why was Yuri killed? Speaking of which, didn't Yuri lock himself in his room after telling the girls to kill him? It'd be awfully difficult to drag that guy out of his room. Hardly. If he was serious, a girl would only need to knock, and Yuri would open his door. Uh, are you saying that the culprit is a girl? So, like, doesn't it all point to Ruko anyway? I'm telling you, it's not me! Wait, everyone. If the culprit were a man, wouldn't that make the crime that much more ingenious? The obvious answer would be that the culprit is a woman, but if it was a man, they would be able to exclude themselves from the list of suspects for that reason. But Yuri's the kind of guy who hates even being spoken to by another guy. As long as Yuri had locked himself in his room, a man would have never been able to lure him out. The party last night. Yuri was at that party, wasn't he? Didn't he drink late into the night too? Oh yeah, he was there. So then if someone attacked Yuri right after the party ended, it could have easily been a man. Yes, that's true. You're taking that into account now? Quick-witted bunch, aren't you? You asshole! You're not even participating in the discussion! What? Do you want me to help? That'll be a million crows. I'll figure this all out for you then. Son of you, Scrooge! If Sora's right, a man really could have attacked Yuri. But that's no reason to rule out a girl as a culprit. Of course. She said that the culprit could be a man. Not that they couldn't be a woman. For a man like Mr. Kagarin, the idea of him giving up his life to a woman that approached him during the festivities is all too plausible. Yeah, but I'm curious about something. The party was last night, right? Yuri died this morning. If the culprit attacked Yuri after the party, wouldn't that mean the culprit was inside the Mono Cruise during nighttime? The Mono Cruise doors lock after 10 p.m. Yeah, if the party was last night and the murder happened this morning, there's a huge gap of time missing between them. So the question is, if a man really did attack Riri after the party, what was he doing until morning? But didn't all the people who were drinking late into the night return to the monocruise before 10 p.m.? Um, that's, uh, I can't really remember. Probably. I was the only sober one there. Although, Yuri was late. He told me he'd be stopping by the bathroom. I get it! That was when somebody kidnapped Rin Rin, then! No, that doesn't make sense, because the murder happened at the bell tower just after the morning announcement. The culprit would have been locked inside the monocruise. They wouldn't have had any time to prepare for the murder.
You're assuming things again. There's no rule that says you have to stay inside the monocruise during nighttime. What? But the rules? State that the monocruise doors close at 10 p.m. and that sleeping outside the dorms is not allowed. That's all. If the culprit never boarded the monocruise, they would be free to wander the island after the door was locked. If they stayed up all night, they wouldn't be breaking any rules. Being outside the monocruise at night isn't a rule violation? Is that true? Yes, I've done it before. I wondered what would happen if I slept during the day and stayed out all night outside. And nothing happened. The doors opened in the morning, and I was able to board the monocruise as usual. But didn't Monocro say that monsters would be wandering the island at night? You still could have been injured, Coco. I was fine. I stayed on the main roads and never ran into any sort of monster. Although, I do wonder if something may be hidden in the forest. If Kokoro is telling the truth, it's possible that Yuri never re-entered the Monocruise last night. According to Yuriko, he did return, just much later than everyone else. But isn't it possible that he was attacked and then placed in the bell tower until this morning? According to that theory, the culprit is one of the people who were drinking late into the night. What do you think, Yoriko? You're one of the people who stayed behind, aren't you? So, oh, that's true. But it wasn't me! I got back to the monocruise with everyone else! About that. None of us were exactly sober, so we don't really remember that. Sorry, Yuko. What? They were all drunk as skunks. Indeed. And none of them can recall a thing. Speaking of which, I don't recall seeing any alcohol during the preparations for the party. Oh, you're right. And yet, there was alcohol abound in the beverages by the time the party started. I believe this is no mere coincidence. Are you saying that the culprit put alcohol in the drinks in order to get everyone drunk and fog up their memories? Wait, isn't it possible that someone impulsively committed a murder because they were under the influence at the time? No. You can tell by looking at the crime scene that someone put a great deal of thought into this murder. It doesn't fit an intoxicated cover-up. If the culprit brought the alcohol, doesn't that mean they helped organize the party? Who are the ones organizing the party? You, Rara, Mac, Yuko, Mikado, and myself. Just the six of us. <laughs> Yoriko is nothing but suspicious. So the culprit's someone that helped with the party and stayed out last night. And they would have to be sober. That's what you're saying? Hey, wait a second. The only person who wasn't drinking last night was Yoriko! She said she'd be chaperoning dry, since we had to get back by 10 p.m. No, I mean that's true, but... That's... The evidence all lines up. Yoriko, can you explain what happened in more detail? We just want to believe you. You're not listening to me! Aren't you taking this a little too far? Look, I'm innocent! To be accused of the culprit because of a series of coincidences. I can still defend myself, you know? Listen to me before you start talking. I know I have to escape your unjust accusations. But if I'm really the culprit, do you really think that I'd go about it this way? Like you said, Yuri would have done anything for a woman, even die for her. There's no reason for me to wait until the party to kill him in such a complicated manner. The culprit may have waited until the party because of their plan involving the alcohol. Like we said before, they used it to dull everyone's memories so they could easily get away with their plan. The fact that Yuri attended the party in itself could indicate that he was working with the culprit. So you're just saying that I could do something as stupid as intentionally going to the party? If I was the culprit, I wouldn't go about it that way. If you two weren't at power with me, you wouldn't be suspecting me. Is that how it is? Just because of that, I'll pierce through those words! Just that, Yoriko. Shobai told me that he saw you going to the bell tower this morning. W what 
He also said you were holding a long rope in your hand. A rope? The same rope that Rinrin -Rin was tied up with? Shobai, you were telling the truth, right? Huh? <laughs> I was. At the time, I didn't know that woman would be so important to the case. I was wondering what she was planning to do with something like that. Now that I think about it, that was a really important piece of evidence. Wait! He's lying! Shobai isn't telling the truth! I really was attacked by someone as soon as I left the monocruise. He's trying to slander me. He's the culprit. E even if you say that... Yeah, all the evidence is stacked against you. It's almost undeniable. Or maybe you're just an idiot, Yariko. W what? Why are you all accusing me? Why me? Mr. Hashimoto's testimony is the most damning thing here. How do you plan to defend yourself against that? Yuko, are you really the culprit? Wait, Shobai really is lying. What? Sora, did Shobai mention when he saw Yoriko leave? That's... Yoriko left right after the morning announcement, so wouldn't that be around 7am? I was on the second floor of the library at the time, and I saw Shobai climbing the stairs from the second to the third floor. Shobai, even if you did see Yoriko leave, unless you knew her destination beforehand, you'd have trouble figuring out she was headed for the bell tower. And didn't you say you saw Yoroku holding a rope? Shobai, were you lying to me? Ha! <laughs> so you caught me out. Sorry about that, but I wanted to test you all. Test us? Like I said, if you clear the class trial for me, I'm good. I was testing whether you could really do it without my interference. What? You gotta be joking! Just a little bit of perjury, really. I didn't think the psychologist would realize. Well, whatever. I'm counting this as a win. You asshole! What the hell are you doing? Settle down, Mr. Kasai. Violence is against the school rules. Calm down, Shin. You can beat him up after we get out of here. Th that proves my innocence, right? Shobai's the one who lied. He's even more suspicious than I am. I don't know. His testimony might be false. But you're still the most likely suspect. But... We're being cruel to Yoriko, aren't we? We should talk about this some more. No, no! Ruko's definitely the killer! I, I don't want to suspect my friends! I want to believe everyone instead! Well, this is rather complicated, isn't it? We seem to be split right down the middle. If that's the case, let's decide with a proper debate. Please remain calm as your seats are rearranged. Yoriko is the only one that went to the party and fits all of the criteria. This one's mine! We still need to figure out if the party is even relevant to the case. No, Yuri. The killer has to be a woman. Emma! We've already established that the murder could have been committed by either a man or a woman. Ruko's the only one with a super suspicious alibi! Yoriko! Kokoro and Chobai don't even have alibis! Why are you accusing me? But... Yoriko, weren't you the only one who handled the food at the party? Kokoro! Thus, Yoriko was not the only one who handled the food at the party. She could have taken advantage of the fact that we were drunk to forge her alibi! Shinji! Yoriko wasn't the only one who wasn't drunk. So shouldn't we suspect the others too? Yoriko is our only suspect. So there's nothing else we can do. Setsuka, we haven't even talked about the possibility of another suspect besides Yuko. This 
is our answer. answer. It seems that the conclusion has continued to evade us. At any rate, it's wrong to conclude that Yuriko's the killer when there's still so many unanswered questions. We need to discuss this some more! Sora... Okay. I don't want to doubt my friends any longer, either. Let's drop the subject of the culprit and discuss some other things first. Wait, so we're back to square one? But thinking, unlike a regular trial, a single misstep will result in tragedy. And we need to keep discussing this until we reach a decisive conclusion. I mean, Kokoro, don't you know who the culprit is? Can't you just tell us so we can call it a day? You all currently believe Yoriko is the culprit. Would you even be able to accept it if I named someone else? So you don't believe Miss Kabuya is the culprit? Alright, so instead of who they are, let's talk about how the culprit did it. How they did it? We're not sure whether the culprit attacked Riri this morning or after the party. Did you forget what the culprit did before they killed Riri? Got it! Are you talking about the hook that was embedded in Yuri's calf? Yeah, you said it was already embedded when you first saw him, right? Even if Riri was drunk, he wouldn't have just stayed still while the culprit stuck that thing into his leg. They would have had to restrain him by any means possible. So you're saying we should discuss how the culprit went about doing that? We might have all been plastered, but... Riri wouldn't have just stayed still while someone stuck a hook into him. Maybe they stunned him by hitting him with a blood weapon? No, that's wrong! I have evidence that the culprit didn't use such a straightforward method, Hibiki. We found traces of an anesthetic solution on the floor of the bell tower. Anesthetic solution? Kanade told me that it's similar to the kind used in the operating room during major surgeries. Yes, you can get some from the infirmary. Its presence at the bell tower leaves no doubt that the culprit used the anesthetic to subdue Mr. Kagarine. Wait, do you think that's the same thing the culprit used when they attacked me? Maybe, but that's besides the point, Yoriko, so be quiet. I... Ugh, fine. And there's one more thing I know about the anesthetic. Got it! Kanade went to the infirmary after finding the anesthetic, and... she discovered that a single syringe had disappeared. A syringe? Yes. You can use that particular syringe to conveniently calculate the sedation time using the scale on the barrel. Uh, that's great and all, but how do you know all this? I watch a lot of medical dramas. Is there a problem? I'm not saying there's a problem, but... No one found a syringe or anything like that while investigating, right? That means... The culprit still has the syringe with them! Should we frisk everyone here? I doubt they'd be idiotic enough to have it on their person, but... We can be sure that they hid it somewhere. If they used a syringe with an anesthetic solution, they could subdue Yuri even if he wasn't drunk. There's one thing that's really bothering me. When Sora and I last saw Yuri, he seemed convinced a woman was trying to take his life. Saying things like, not everyone gets to be killed by a cute classmate, and being born a man and achieving my dream. He said that as he was about to die? Heek! So if he said that, does that make the culprit a woman after all? The thing that's bothering me is that Yuri told all of us that he would cooperate with a female culprit. But they restrained him and waited until he was drunk. If the culprit was a female, that wouldn't be necessary. That's what I've been saying since the beginning. 
Yeah, that's true. It'd just create more evidence, right? Let's review. Assuming the culprit is male, he would only be able to target Yuri after yesterday's party. We still have no idea what happened before nighttime, though. Assuming the culprit is female, she would be able to get to Yuri at any time inside the monocruise. However, she wouldn't have had enough time to prepare for the crime in the morning. Like the other scenario, we still have no idea what happened before nighttime. About what happened before nighttime, doesn't it seem possible that the culprit's preparations took place during that time? What? Like Kokoro said, anyone can stay outside the monocruise at night using the loophole in the rules. We can't explain how the culprit prepared for their crime during the short time frame in the morning, so we can just assume by default that it took place at night. That's almost nine hours! Would it really take them that long to prepare for the murder? I'm not sure. They just need to prepare the hooks, the rope, the anesthetic, the wires, and... That's all, I think. Right. None of you can possibly think that the culprit simply dragged Jerry up with just a rope, do you? Huh? Ah, uh, I did think something was amiss when you began accusing Yoriko. You've been mistaken from the beginning. What are you talking about? The culprit didn't just drop Yuri to his death after dragging him up from the bell tower. Then, what else did they do? Oh, I see. It was so obvious that I almost missed it. In hindsight, it's clear. Think. Yuri was short. But it's physically impossible for anyone to drag him hundreds of feet out to the bell tower. I doubt even Shinji could do it. Really? If you use the lever of sorts, it might be possible. Yes, it's possible. However, we were wrong in our initial assumption that the culprit was the one who pulled Yuri up. Our initial assumption was wrong? So what? What's the problem? situation. Kanade's explanation is correct. Think, Sora. You've seen the evidence too. I can remind you if you don't remember. Yuri was dragged to the top of the tower at a great speed. This is an impossible feat for a regular person to accomplish. How was the culprit able to achieve this? The speed in which Yuri was dragged up indicates something was pulling him down from the other side, don't you think? And you didn't find anyone on the top of the bell tower. So therefore, you can figure this out for yourself, can't you? I agree with that! that Yuri wasn't dragged up by the culprit. It's more logical to think that he was pulled up in reaction to something else. What are you talking about? There was a hook stuck in Yuri's calf, which was attached to a long rope. We thought that someone pulled Yuri up by that rope, but... If you think about it, it's physically impossible for someone to do that on their own. Huh? Are you sure? Furthermore, I discovered something with Setsuka earlier. Oh, you're talking about the life jacket, aren't you? Yes. Someone had left it hidden outside of the bell tower. We found the same kind of hook that was stuck in Yuri's calf embedded into the life jacket. And that hook was attached to a rope. However, the end was cut off. So, what does that mean? Oh! So in other words, Yuri was connected to the life jacket by the hooked end of the rope. If the culprit jumped down from the bell tower while wearing the life jacket, Yuri would be pulled by the other end. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Exactly. That's what the culprit did. Wait, I don't get it. So why was Ruko at the top of the bell tower? Well, according to Yuriko, she was attacked and found herself unconscious, and then awoke at the top of the bell tower. 
When Yuki and I met Yuri on the first floor, the culprit must have been waiting for us at the top of the bell tower, along with the unconscious Yoriko, of course. That explains why Miss Kabuya was the only one there when Miss Sora and Mr. Maeda arrived. She was a red herring. The real culprit couldn't have been there. After all, they were already outside the bell tower when Mr. Kagarin was pulled up. It makes sense in theory, but I don't think he'd be able to be pulled up so easily. Why not? There's tons of other factors involved, like friction and whatnot. Sora, do you remember the bell ringing as Yuri was being pulled up? Yes, and now I think I know why. Got it! The culprit threaded the rope through the hanging bell and used it as a fulcrum. I can't draw that well, but I'll draw you a picture to illustrate. Iroha, may I borrow your sketchbook? This is how the culprit did it. As you all know, the hole in the top of the bell is very small. Small enough that the hook can't pass through it. I suspect that the culprit attached the hooks after first threading the rope through the hole. Really high up! How is that even possible? Well, I get it, but... Sora, your drawings could use some improvement. Wait... How did the culprit adjust the length of the rope? It sounds simple in theory, but they could have easily fallen to their death if they'd miscalculated. I believe they practiced it beforehand. If you look at the marks on the bell, they don't look shallow enough to have been made by a single attempt. Are you proposing that the culprit practiced this act many times before committing the actual crime? Yes. The hooks that were connected to Yuri couldn't have passed through the hole in the bell, so the culprit wouldn't fall. The marks on the bell are probably from the friction caused by the rope, and also from the metal hooks scraping against the bell. After the culprit used the correct rope length to reach the surface, they could cut the end of the rope attached to the life jacket and Yuri would fall to the ground due to the shifting weight and balance. This is the truth of the crime scene that Yuki and I witnessed. Wait a moment. Even if the culprit accounted for the length of the rope, the bell tower is far too tall. If they fell while hanging from just a life jacket with a hook, the force from the landing would dislocate their shoulders. Got it! Earlier, Emma was wondering why the culprit would go through all the trouble of setting up those wires. The answer to Kanadi's question is probably the broken wires. The broken wires? Yuri was cut by the wires as he was dragged up at a high speed. The resulting friction in the process may have had the effect of cushioning the impact. Now I get it. The wires weren't meant to kill Yuri, but rather to lessen the impact of the fall. This explains why the culprit went through the tedious work of setting up those wires. Without a doubt. Um, there's something bothering me. If the wires were sharp enough to slice through flesh, why didn't they cut the rope? If it really was that sharp, it should have cut the rope attached to Yuri too. That rope was made from special materials. It's a tough one from the mart that won't break unless you carefully cut through its padding. I thought it was cool, so I took note of it. I didn't expect it to be used in a murder, though. So, Ruko's not the culprit? That's what I've been telling you from the start. I'm a victim here too. That's too bad. What? What do you mean that's too bad? Now we have to suspect everyone besides you as the culprit. How are we supposed to narrow it down to the culprit now? I, I see. So we're back at the start? Not really. We did learn something from the previous discussion. The culprit should have been outside the monocruz during nighttime after they kidnapped Yuri. Huh? How do you know that? Think about it. If the culprit was able to do test runs to adjust the rope's length exactly as they needed, then they must have had enough time to do so. Being outside during nighttime with no one else but Yuri gives the culprit plenty of time to run trials without anyone finding out. Good point. Someone surely would have noticed the culprit if he was doing trial runs during daytime. Furthermore, there was a prevailing misconception that no one could exit the monocruise during nighttime. I'm sure the culprit thought there would be a good time to test their plan, 
Yeah, I'm surprised that we still held that belief until now when people like Kokoro already knew that wasn't the case. Well, I just stayed up all night once. Based on the previous discussion, we can infer that the culprit is a man. As we already know, a woman would have no reason to use such difficult methods. It's true that Mr. Kagarin's death would be automatically attributed to a woman due to his previous outburst. So, should a man have committed the crime, the very act of murder itself would become his alibi. A rather clever ploy, I must admit. So now that we know that, we can just narrow it down from all the guys here, right? In that case, we already know the culprit. It's either Mikiro or Shobai. Shobai doesn't have an alibi, and Mikiro's the mastermind. Please do not forget my sincere wish for a class trial free of prejudice. It should be unquestionably clear that I am giving it my all to unveil the truth. <sighs> huh? Shobai, were you asleep this whole time? Hmm? Huh. Still not over. You must be crazy. Our lives are at stake right now, and you just dozed off? Hey, you've got all you need. I know the whole story, but you guys don't need my help to figure it out. I haven't been getting... a lot of sleep lately. Wake me up... <sighs> when it's over. He's insane! Anyways... Shobai or Mikado being the culprit seems unlikely, big bro. The culprit must have stayed late at the party last night to kidnap Yuri, but neither Mikado or Shobai were included in that group. Uh... but you know, can't Mikado use magic? You've seen him flying around like nothing. Kidnapping Yuri with those abilities would be a piece of cake! Nox's second law. All supernatural and preternatural agencies are ruled out as a matter of course. Uh, what the heck is that? An absolute code of logic in detective fiction that cannot be violated. It forbids supernatural or unrealistic phenomena from interfering with murders. Oh, I know that! Isn't it from Umi Neko when they cry? I give you my most sincere, emphatic vow that I do not use my magic for matters relating to murder cases. I'm not sure I get it, but how can you be so sure? Do you really think we'd ever believe the word of the mastermind? It seems I am left with little choice. Monica, I humbly request that you add a new rule. Mikado Sanoji cannot use magic for any purpose relating to a murder case. Hmm? Are you sure about that rule? Absolutely. I've already resolved to seal my magic, and its very existence seems to be a hindrance to the natural progression of this trial. I wish to use this opportunity to clarify my position within this killing game. Very well. The regulations will be updated once the trial is over. Mikado Senoji cannot use magic for any purpose relating to a murder case. As a reminder, the penalty will be execution should you fail to comply. I understand completely. You have my deepest gratitude. S so Mikado can't be the culprit. Why are you trying to make this problem harder than it is? The answer is already out. There's a suspicious individual who satisfies every condition. Huh? You spoke about the conditions to be the culprit beforehand. Think it over. The individual you refer to is in plain sight. The conditions that we brought up were... The culprit was among those who stayed late at yesterday's party. The culprit was also part of the group that prepared the party. Additionally, we figured out that the culprit is a man while discussing the life vest and the murder rehearsals. Only be you! Was it you? Hajime Makinochi. Was it you, Hajime? What? Wait a minute, Sora! Do you 
think Hajime's the culprit? There's nobody aside from Hajime that meets all the conditions to be the culprit. He helped prepare the party and stayed late to drink with Yuri. He's the only one who was in both groups, and is a man as well. Precisely. I have been suspecting Hajime since the beginning. How'd you know right off the bat? You will remember my question at the start of the investigation. I asked, how do you feel about this murder? Ah, yes. But how is that relevant? I can figure out whether a person is lying or not just by hearing them talk. What? So you knew Hajime was the culprit just from that one question? Miss Mitsume, that sounds like an even more magical ability than my own spells. I cannot be completely sure of my deduction, naturally. But were I to narrow down my suspects, however, I can figure out the answer by simply comparing the evidence to each suspect. The culprit is Hajime Makunochi. Then Yuri's murderer, the person that attacked me, it was all him? Hey, hold on a damn second! Why am I the culprit all of a sudden? Don't you remember? I may fit the bill, but that doesn't change the fact that I was drunk. The only person who wasn't drunk was Yoruko. Don't tell me you all forgot about that. Y yeah that's true, but... Yoruko was the only sober person at the party, and even she agrees I was drunk. How could I possibly have killed Yuri? You all said the culprit made serious preparations. Stuff like trial runs. Wouldn't that be impossible to do if you're drunk? Are you guys really accusing me as the culprit? Just because I fit your little conditions? Because if you are, I'm about to get really mad. out their crimes while drunk. So they must have been someone who didn't consume alcohol. Right! There's no way Hajime's the culprit! Shinji, please make judgments based on logic, not your friendship. There's plenty of reasons why Hajime is suspicious. No matter how suspicious I am, I couldn't have done anything while I was drunk. Ask Yoriko and check yourself. Hajime just said it's true. Including Hajime, everyone who stayed to enjoy the party last. No, that's wrong! Everyone was completely drunk last night? I'm not so sure about that. What are you saying? I found these liquor bottles in the guest house, and some of them were filled with water. Water? At first, I thought it was mixed in during the whole mess of alcohol being brought to the party. But now that I think about it, it's possible that the culprit was just pretending to be drunk and drink water instead. Wait a minute. I don't remember much because of my foggy memory. But are you saying that someone was just acting as if they were drunk? If Hajime was acting drunk during the party, he knew we would cross him off the suspect list. There's more to it than just that. Got it! Yoriko, do you remember what you told me earlier? You said Yuri left to go to the washroom before you all went back to the monocruise. Yes, I did. Didn't you also say that someone else left with Yuri at that time? You said you couldn't remember who that someone was, but do you think that person could have been Hajime? Huh? Uh, give me a second to think. Well, um... Wait, I think I remember. That person told us to go ahead while he took Riri to the washroom. They told us they'd follow us back right after. They had blonde hair and bulky muscles. It was Mac! Yes, I believe it was. I wasn't paying much attention back then because I was under the influence. The thought that a murder would occur had hardly crossed my mind that night. 
you both remember? Jeez, why can't I remember? Even the drunk people remember what happened. Why couldn't you, Yoriko? Because your brain has more air bubbles than last night's booze. Uh, I can't take note of everything while I'm completely absorbed in taking care of drunk people. Why are you being so harsh with me? Because your bad memory frustrates me. How do you remember? We could have pinned down the culprit much faster than we did. But thanks to the testimonies from the others, I think we've got the culprit set in stone. Gary must have been completely drunk. He couldn't even walk on his own. In fact, wouldn't he nearly be out cold, considering the fact that he didn't refuse help from a man like Hajime? So Hajime lied about Yuri going to the washroom and left off with him, then never came back to the mono cruise. Considering Hajime as the culprit allows everything we've talked about so far to make perfect sense. Hajime, did you really murder Yuri? I'll extinguish ya! Wait! Wait! Sora, please! Uh, Hajime's the culprit? That can't be right! Hajime has an alibi, please! Let me explain. I know fighting with words isn't my thing, but... But I'll have to do it to fight you, Sora. I have to do it for my friend! Hajime and I go jogging every morning. That's our routine right after waking up. As always, I was waiting for him this morning. Like I said, while I was leaving, I saw Yuroki leaving the mono cruise. Hajime did arrive a little bit later than usual, but... Committing murder in that small gap is impossible! He's a cool guy! And when the man's gotta go, he's gotta go! You can't blame him for that! Shinji, don't you think the fact that he arrived late itself rouses suspicion? Hajime is pretty strict about time as far as I know. Even if what you said is true, something about his actions are strange. Yes, certainly strange. But when the discovery announcement was made, Hajime was with us at the dining hall! Hajime committed the murder at the bell tower. He wouldn't have returned in time to meet you. I'll pierce through those words! Sorry, Shinji. Hajime actually could have easily made it back in time. The body discovery announcement was made some time after Yuri's death. What? Of course. The announcement is only made when three or more people discover the body. There was no announcement when Sora and I saw Yuri's corpse. Monaco announced the discovery only after we ran to the top and met Yoriko and she also saw the body. So, did it go something like this? From Yuri's death to the body discovery announcement? The culprit had extra time to move around while Sora and Yuki climbed up the stairs. As everyone who used the stairs during the investigation knows, it takes at least five minutes to get to the top. Of course, the culprit was able to quickly get down safely by jumping off the tower using his fulcrum mechanism. This is a small island. If you run fast enough from the bell tower to the mono cruise, wouldn't it be possible to meet with everyone else at the dining hall before the announcement? Then. Wait, but didn't Shinji say he went jogging with Hajime? Yuri died at 7.30 a.m. If they went jogging together right after the morning announcement, how did Hajime kill Yuri? Shinji and I briefly parted ways while jogging. B but that was just to get your crow card that you left at the guest house, right? And even that didn't take more than 10 minutes! Executing this whole murder plan in such a short time isn't possible! There's one thing that keeps bothering me. Do we agree that the culprit attacked Yuko right after the door opened, and then they carried her to the top of the tower? If so, they attacked Yuko and moved her to the bell tower at 7 o'clock on the dime, returned to the monocruise and met with Shin, started jogging, parted with him, and went to the top of the tower again, checked that Yu and Rava were there, and murdered Riri by jumping off, dealt with the rope and the life vest, and then came back to the monocruise, all within such a short period of time? Shinji? At what time did you meet with Hajime this morning? Well, it was around 7.15 a.m. 
Even if we say the culprit ambushed Yoriko at 7 a.m., five minutes to run to the tower, five minutes to rush up the stairs, five minutes to rush back down, five minutes back to the cruise, there just wouldn't be enough time, even if Hajime buffed up his strength somehow. Oh, there'd be enough time, all right. All you have to do is remove a step, and all the pieces fit perfectly into place. Remove a step? Were the stairs the only way down? No. He could have slid down the rope, as if he were riding an elevator. Didn't he already adjust their rope length for that? Ah, oh, that makes sense. But wasn't the rope that connected to the life vest also connected to Yuri's body? Yuri died at 7.30 a.m., but if he rode the rope at that time, he would have killed Yuri after jumping. That's still a problem. He just had to get rid of the rope's connection with Yuri. Hachimei could have simply yanked up the hook from Yuri's calf while he was carrying Yoriko to the top. Ew. Not a lot of people wander outside in the morning. And Hashime would be the first person to enter the bell tower. Wouldn't everything be solved if we assume that he put it back into Yuri's leg? Got it! The mysterious stab wound on Yuri's right calf. Kanade's hypothesis would explain how that wound was created in the first place. Initially, the hook was in Yuri's right calf, but in order to save time after moving Yoriko to the top, the culprit used it as a mode of transportation. In other words, the culprit took out the hook from his right calf to move down, then hooked it back into Riri's left calf when he returned? After a meeting with Shinji, the only thing left for him was to take his plan into action. So when he saw Yuki and Sara making their way to the top of the bell tower, he jumped down to kill Yuri. Wait, Rara. You said a while ago that the culprit used wires to slow the falling and cushion the impact. But if he used the rope before the murder like you just said, doesn't that mean there was nothing to cushion the impact? Ah, uh, that's true. The wires cutting Yuri's body would break the fall when the culprit killed him. But if he jumped with nothing but a small hook on the other side, there wouldn't be anything to slow him down. Uh, isn't this a bit problematic? I remember Miss Little Sis saying anyone who fell from that height would get their shoulders crushed. No, it's not a problem this time. I know this sounds like I'm contradicting my own words, but... Unlike back then, we know for sure who the culprit is. The culprit? Are you speaking of Hajime? Earlier, I said anyone would end up with a shoulder injury because I didn't know who the culprit was. But Hajime is the ultimate boxer. Wouldn't he be able to withstand some degree of impact with his great physique? After all, no one cares more about their health than he does. The life vest also would have absorbed some of the impact, right? But doesn't that sound a bit... unrealistic? And even if he could survive the fall, that doesn't explain why he would bother setting up those wires. Why waste time preparing a braking system when he can just endure the impact in the first place? In your opinion, who amongst us would possess the fortitude necessary to pull off such a feat? Huh? Well... Based on pure muscle, I guess Hachime will be bro. You see, the list of potential culprits has instantaneously been reduced to two individuals. Huh? Oh, I get it. The fact that they were set up could be so the culprit could use their existence as an alibi. If there weren't any breaks, the second that jumping trick was revealed, our first question would obviously be, who could endure the impact? Exactly. Of course. He also might have still needed a safety device to lessen the pain of the full impact. Regardless of whether or not Hajime ended up enduring the impact, it's a definitive truth that the culprit jumped twice from the top of the bell tower, and therefore our conclusion would also be correct. Perhaps we should also examine Hajime's shoulders and see if we find any other condemning evidence. Yeah, the culprit would have had plenty of time at night to estimate the strength of the impact through experimentation. If I may interject... Yuki stated that he received a message from Yuri asking for assistance, but the existence of this correspondence in itself is extremely suspicious. Yuri, with his acute misandry, reaching out to another man on the verge of his own death, is it not unnatural? Most certainly. Yuki even said that Yuri was delighted at the idea of being killed by a woman. It's definitely not the attitude of someone who would ask for help, if such a thing had actually happened. The message was probably sent to Yuki by Hajime, using Yuri E Handbook Plus to create an alibi. 
That way, he'd be able to make whoever witnessed the murder scene run up to the top of the tower to catch the culprit. Now I see why he used a syringe with measurements on it to inject the anesthetic. It was to make sure that Yuri woke up the second Sora and I got to the tower. So, Jimmy was really thinking that far ahead when he planned the murder? Hey, wh why are you all so confident that Hajime's the culprit? So the culprit set up wires not only to cushion the impact, but to confuse us and set up an alibi. And then he used the rope to move down. I'd say that theory checks out. But why did he put the hook in Yuri's leg and then take it back out? He could have gone down the tower with the rope first and then put it in his leg. Could it be, perchance, that Miss Kabuya's interference threw a wrench into the culprit's machinations? Threw a wrench? Allow me to explain my reasoning. Being unable to enter the monocruise once the slumbering hours occurred, the culprit was left with no option but to wait until morning. Therefore, it was crucial that they board the ship the moment the gates opened so they could play the part of the innocent. But, Miss Kabuya stated that she exited the monocruise the instant the gates opened. Perhaps the two had a fateful encounter. Thus, the culprit had no choice but to ambush her in order to eliminate any possibility of her going to the bell tower. It would have completely jeopardized his carefully laid out plans, after all. I agree with Mikado. If you think about it, jumping off the top of the bell tower like that without anything to cushion your fall was just insane. It would have been a risky gamble. Even for Hajime, he wouldn't have done it unless he was forced to, due to some outside interference. But, like, why did Ruko even go out that early in the morning? It makes her super suspicious, you know? I told you already. I just wanted to get a head start on my investigation. With everyone's morale being boosted from the party, I felt motivated to really give it my all. But the murder made the whole thing pointless, of course. Well, I think we finally put all the pieces together. Is there anything we're missing, Hajime? Hey! Hajime! I still believe in you! Why are you just standing there? Tell them they're wrong! I admit, everything they've said seems to line up nicely. I'm not sure where to start. Maybe that's because you're guilty? Hmm? That's enough! Don't you believe in your friends at all? You're all teaming up on me with weak, bullshit speculation. There's nothing else to say. What's the point? You've got no proof! Why are you suspecting me? That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe this! You guys really falling for this it's shit? It's over. You've got no evidence. What a load of crap! That ain't convincing! You've got no proof! What's the point? You guys really falling for this shit? I refuse to believe this! Your logic is bullshit! It's over. That ain't convincing! I'm done for. I refuse to believe this! What a load of crap! You've got no proof! Why are you suspecting me? That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe this! You guys really falling for this shit? Your logic is bullshit! You've got no evidence! What a load of crap! That ain't convincing! You've got no proof! Why are you suspecting me? You guys really falling for this shit? I refuse to believe this! Your logic is bullshit! You've got no evidence! It's over. You guys really falling for this shit? I refuse to believe this! What a load of crap! You've got no proof! Why are you suspecting me? That ain't convincing! <laughs> I refuse to believe this! Your logic is bullshit! Why are you suspecting me? You guys really falling for this You've shit? You've got no evidence! What a load of crap! Why are you suspecting me? You've got no proof! That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe this! You've got no evidence! What's the point? That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe this! Your logic is bullshit! Why are you suspecting me? You've got no evidence! What a load of crap! Why are you suspecting me? You've got no proof! That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe this! You've got no evidence! What's the point? That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe this! Your logic is bullshit! Why are you suspecting me? I'm for. It's over. What a load of crap! Why are you suspecting me? You've got no proof! It's over. I refuse to believe this! You've got no evidence! What a load of crap! It's over. I refuse to believe this! Your logic is bullshit! Why are you suspecting me? You've got no evidence! <laughs> 
You've got no proof! Why are you suspected me? Hey, convincing! Your logic is bullshit! You guys really falling for I this I refuse to believe this! It's over. What a load of crap! That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe it's this! It's over. Your logic is bullshit! What a load of crap! You've got no proof! You've got no evidence! Why are you suspecting me? I refuse to believe this! Why are you suspecting me? That ain't convincing! Your logic is bullshit! You guys really falling for I this! I refuse to believe this! You've got no evidence! What a load of crap! That ain't convincing! I refuse to believe this! You've got no evidence! Your logic is bullshit! What a load of crap! You've got no proof! You've got no evidence! Why are you suspecting me? Tell me why the hell I'm suspicious! This is the end! No! Stop it! Hey, Hajime. Are you really going to insist that you were drunk? You, Hajime Makinochi, got completely drunk? That's not like you at all, Hajime. Nobody in our group cares more about their health than you, Hajime. I thought it was kind of strange that you were drinking at the party. You did say drinking a bit was good for your health, but you've made it sound like you drank way more than that. And I just can't see someone like you not being able to restrain themselves from drinking. There's a little thing called mood at a party, you know? I'm human just like the rest of you. Even I can cut loose and ignore my health for a bit. Ah, oh, Mac. I just remembered. You were the one who invited Riri to the party, weren't you? <laughs> but, right. He suggested that we invite Yuri, saying he's not entirely a bad person. Even then, he hadn't forgotten to talk about the importance of health. Damn it! <sighs> Hajime! What the hell were you thinking? I'm not the culprit. Fine. Have it your way. Let's review this case from the start. Then you'll have no choice but to admit to your crimes. Began when Yuri started saying all that weird stuff about wanting to die for a single woman. He knew we were all growing desperate, so he offered any girl the chance to kill him and escape. Unfortunately, his words caught the attention of this case's culprit. If Yuri had been killed, everyone would suspect a woman of being the culprit. The culprit used this to their advantage in the murder. However, Yuri had locked himself away and only answered to women. Setsuka decided she wanted to host a surprise party to get everyone to cheer up. Our culprits saw this party as the critical part of their plan. After getting himself involved with the party setup, he was able to convince everyone to invite Yuri. While preparing the party, our culprit took the opportunity to swap some of the drinks with alcohol. This was to make sure people would get drunk. 
It wasn't long after the party started when Yuri, a man who was fond of alcohol, had become completely intoxicated. Both our culprit and the victim drank late into the night until they had to return to the monocruise. Once the party reached its end, our culprit helped Yuri and slipped away from the others. As a result, both the culprit and the victim were left all alone at night outside the monocruise. Once separated, the culprit took our victim directly to the bell tower. Since this all took place at night, there were no witnesses or interruptions that could affect them. Yuri was already passed out from being drunk, but to be extra sure, our culprit used a syringe to inject him with an anesthetic solution that would keep him out for a long time. Since our culprit had plenty of time until morning, he took some time to practice his method. It was during this practice that they made sure all of their measurements were perfect. Once the culprit was satisfied with their preparations, they had to wait outside until morning. Once the morning announcement went off, our culprit was going to enter the monocruise. However, as soon as the doors opened, Yoriko stepped out of the monocruise. If she had gone to the bell tower, this whole case would have been ruined for the culprit. The culprit had no choice but to inject her with the remaining anesthetic and moved her to the bell tower. Although the decision was made in the moment, it actually ended up driving suspicion away from them. During this time, the culprit had become late to the morning jog with Shinji, so they had to hurry. So, they removed the hook from Yuri's right calf while moving Yuriko. Going both up and down the stairs would take too much time, so they decided to use the hook as a means of transportation. With Yoriko in tow, the culprit rushed to the top of the bell tower. With the hook detached, our culprit quickly jumped off the tower using their fulcrum method. Normally, they would injure themselves without the weight of Yuri and the wires to slow them down. But, they decided to take a risk and put their faith into their fitness and health. Luckily for our culprit, his talent was perfect for something like this. The culprit, who had shortened his travel time, joined with Shinji in the monocruise. During the jog, our culprit made an excuse to depart from Shinji for a moment. Returning to the bell tower, the culprit rearranged the hook placement. They couldn't reuse the right calf, as it had been completely torn up, so they inserted it into the left calf. This is the reason he had wounds on both of his calves. Once everything was ready, the culprit used Yuri's e-handbook plus to send a distress message to Yuki. As Yuki received the distress message, our culprit quickly made their way up to the bell tower. Once the culprit heard that we had arrived and Yuri had woken up, the culprit jumped off the bell tower once again, this time with the intention of murder. Yuri, who was connected to the life jacket via the hooks, was sent flying into the air. As Yuri flew up, he was cut by several sharp wires that had been set up by the culprit. The culprit, now safely on the ground, cut the rope and... Yuri was sent falling downwards to finish him off. Since there was nothing to slow his fall, it was without a doubt the true cause of death. Yuri, who we had just witnessed alive a moment earlier, was now a bloody mess on the ground. This is the truth of Yuri's death as Yuki and I had witnessed it. Once we saw the gruesome sight, we decided to rush up the stairs, hoping to find the culprit at the top. While we rushed to the top, the culprit disposed of the life jacket and was hurried towards the monocruise. Doing so would give them an alibi when the body discovery announcement went off. Fortunately for them and their fitness, they were able to make it back in time for the announcement. Right after the body discovery announcement, the culprit made their way to the bell tower with everyone else. In doing so, they reacted innocently with everyone else and pretended to be shocked by the event. However, this was all an act. In truth, they had been the one to kill Yuri. That culprit is without a doubt. You, Hajime Makinochi, the ultimate boxer!
It's over, Hajime. You are the culprit. Well, I guess I can't argue against that. Does... does that mean...? It can't be helped. They got it all right. I'm sorry, Shinji, but... I'm the culprit. Have we reached a conclusion? That wasn't nearly as interesting as I thought it would be. Are you ready to see if your answer is right or wrong? As a warning, you only have one chance. I will assume that you've had enough time and proceed to the voting. Ladies and gentlemen, use the panel in front of you to vote for who you believe to be the culprit. Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What is it going to be? <laughs>